Good morning and welcome as we gather together on this Sunday morning for our church service. We are glad that you are with us today. And as we prepare our hearts and minds, let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, giver of life, your light shines in our lives and your glory is revealed through your Son, Jesus Christ. Reveal his glory to us as you did to Peter, James, and John, that we may be filled with his power and our mouths may proclaim his presence forevermore. We lift up all of these things as we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cry out. God does not keep silent. Cry out. We long to hear God's word. Cry out. Tell of God's wonderful deeds. At this time, as we gather together, let us take a few moments and to remember names and situations that we lift up with our joys and concerns, and we will have a brief moment of silent prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our Children's Moments Time. And as we gather together, today we are celebrating Valentine's Day. Today is one of those days that we should really, really like because it is a time when everyone stops what they are doing in their busy and hurried lives and they tell the people who are important to them that they love them. Now, most people do more than just tell those special people, I love you. Uh, they might do something to show them that love. For example, they might give them a gift like a teddy bear. They might give them a Valentine's Day card or write a poem. They might give them a box of candy. They might even go as far as to fix their favorite dinner for that night. Now, just to let you know, in case you didn't know, God has written us a love letter to each one of us, and that is the Bible. The Bible is God's love letter for us. The Bible tells us that God created each of us and that God loves all of us, no matter what. 
It doesn't matter how many times we have made mistakes or what kinds of bad choices we make, God will still love us. God loves us so much that God's Son, Jesus, was sent to live and walk on the earth. And during his years of ministry, Jesus taught us a great deal about love. And even today, Jesus teaches us that it is not only important to love others, but it is also important to show our love to others. In the Bible, coming from the Gospel of John in chapter 13, verse 34, we find a verse where Jesus said this, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Isn't it great that we have this amazing love letter, the Bible, to remind us that God loves us and to show us how to love others through the examples of Jesus Christ? Now I know that there are many people that we love in our lives, so I hope that all of us will do more than just tell those people that we love them. I hope we will find ways to show those people that we love them every day. I also want us to remember that God has sent us a love letter. And in that letter, God promises to love us, no matter what. Thank you for joining me today for our children's moments. And before you go, let us bow in prayer. God of love, we thank you for giving us the greatest love letter of all, the Bible. We ask that you help us to use that love letter as a reminder of how much you love us. Help us to find ways to love others as Jesus has loved us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next time. As you follow along today, our reading comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13. And now I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. In a Peanuts cartoon strip, Lucy shares with Charlie Brown that she doesn't understand love. She tells Charlie Brown she would like him to explain what love is. Needless to say, Charlie Brown responds that we as human beings can't explain love. We may look to a book or a poem or a painting, but we can't explain it. It's too mysterious. That's when Lucy, in good Lucy fashion, 
emphatically insists that Charlie Brown explain what love is. Charlie Brown, of course, can't say no to Lucy, and he can't resist doing what Lucy tells him to do, and so Charlie Brown begins to talk about a cute girl who walks by and begins to describe how beautiful the girl is. Lucy immediately interrupts and wonders why the girl has to be cute. Why can't boys fall in love with a girl who has freckles or a big nose? That's Lucy's question. By this time, Charlie Brown has had enough. With sighs only Charlie Brown can express, he throws up his hands in disgust, complaining that not only is love unexplainable, it's something you can't even talk about. Charlie Brown, as it so often happens, touches upon a profound truth. Love cannot be explained. Love is beyond explanation. At times, love is best left unexplained. It is a mystery. If we are to explain it at all, we can explain it by the lives of the people who love. We need more than words to understand it. We need to see the lives of those who live it. We need to see love demonstrated in how we live and in how we relate. I believe there are times we all have a little Charlie Brown in us because we all have a hard time talking about love. We struggle to put into words what we think and feel about what is important to us. Therefore, when we try to speak of love, we look for help from poetry and literature. We look for help from those who are living this way for the words to communicate what love is. This is why the famous words from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 13 get our attention. We read these words and before we know it, we are being read by them. We read and we recognize the depth of what they say. We realize the truth of Paul's message. How easy it is for us to forget then that these words are written to address congregational struggle and division. More than the sentimental note on the latest wedding card, this letter speaks to the profound truth of the gospel in daily life. We forget that Paul wrote these words to a congregation dealing with all kinds of issues, from the role of women to the role of spiritual gifts, from the importance of worship to the behavior of persons at the Lord's Supper. All these issues were happening when Paul wrote to the church in this growing seaport in Greece, with all its gods and goddesses, with all its pagan temples and cults, with all its philosophies and lifestyles, Paul is in the heat of battle. Paul is working to establish a Christian congregation in the middle of a growing multicultural, multi-religious society with people from all over the world coming and going, trading and exchanging goods and sharing and promoting a variety of viewpoints. In doing so, Paul has to deal with disagreement and conflict and confusion in the church. He has to address the, the messiness of, life's, of life together in community. Therefore, Instead of a romantic love letter sent to the bride and groom on their wedding day, this letter speaks to the way we Christians are to practice our faith. It speaks to the costly and patient love we Christians are to demonstrate to others as we shape and form the character of righteousness. It speaks to the way we are to conduct ourselves on behalf of Jesus Christ. So, when we ask ourselves, in good Tina Turner fashion, what's love got to do with it? We can respond, it's got everything to do with it. Even when we can't fully understand it, love has everything to do with the Christian life. This is why, although it's hard to explain, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 calls us to respond. It calls us to deal with these words in a way that will help us grow into the likeness and character of Jesus Christ. 
Taken out of context, the reading simply fails to proclaim the depths of the gospel. So as we look at this scripture, it is good to break it down into steps. Our job is to get to the heart of what Paul is saying when he writes in verses 7 and 8 that love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. Stated another way, love is mature and abiding and is not about moral weakness. It does not pick at the wrong or pretend that wrong doesn't exist. It is not pale or anemic, crass or rude. Instead, love is self-giving and grows. It stands up and is counted. It has convictions and it has strength. It does not crumble in the face of adversity. It knows adversity and responds with truth. It is able to bear all things. In fact, the phrase, bear all things, means we have a picture of love casting a veil over our weaknesses and failings, over our shortcomings and mistakes. To bear all things is to cover punishment for the purpose of redemption. It is to carry the burden or punishment of another person on our own shoulders. To bear all things is to act in self-giving love toward others. Love not only bears, but also believes all things. Love is always ready to make allowances, to trust, to hope, and to endure whatever comes. Love's first thing is to believe in people. Love wants to believe the best. It is like the message we hear Jesus teach in the parable of the prodigal son in the Gospel of Luke. When the father welcomes back his youngest son, we can see an example of how this self-giving love is practiced, believing the best in spite of the worst. To believe all things is to persevere in the face of the evidence. It, it goes out and welcomes the prodigal home. No matter the season, no matter the circumstance, love rejoices and celebrates when the lost are found. It continues to believe when we miss the mark and fall short of the glory of God, as it says in Romans chapter 3. This is why love hopes all things. It never regards anyone or any situation as hopeless. No matter what the situation is, we are not beyond hope. We are not beyond God's guiding hand. We are not beyond God's love in Jesus Christ. We cannot do anything to separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. When all seems hopeless, self-giving love moves closer. It is hard to explain, but when the gates of hell open, the gates of heaven open wider. When the people of God stand at the sea with Pharaoh's army approaching, God's power comes and opens the sea. When the disciples run away at Calvary, God overcomes the darkness and opens the grave. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. There is no limit to this love. There is no limit to this love's endurance. There is no thing that can prevent this love from loving. Nothing can break its spirit. Nothing can keep it down, for it never looks back but presses on for the prize of the upward call of God in Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, no matter the season, no matter the situation, love never ends. It never fails. Even when we don't completely understand, even when we can't fully explain, love never fails because it is always bearing and believing, always hoping and enduring always forgiving and welcoming, always embracing and redeeming. In all things, in all seasons, love never ends. Amen.
Thank you for joining us today for our Sunday morning service. And as we get ready to begin a new week and go our separate ways for the day, let us go to God in prayer. Brothers and sisters, let us come to the light. Let us come to the glory. Let us come to the word. Let us come and worship. Let us come and sing. Let us come and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us leave here shouting out loud, singing with joy, and let us rejoice with gladness and announce that the glory of God is here. Amen.